Hi, I'm Edward James. I'm from Toronto, Canada, and I'm an international fashion photographer. Uh, tell us how you could get there in fashion photography business. Well, I've been uh, in photography for going on 16 years, and I started out as a music photographer doing uh, stills on music videos and doing marketing campaigns for major bands. Um, and at the time in Canada, there was a lot of uh, work going on there, but then it ended and went back to California. So I made the switch from music to fashion. Uh, I started my own fashion company and uh, then started to travel the world shooting the shows. All right, just tell us, is it difficult to shoot the runway shows or is it pretty like standard? Well, everybody thinks that I live the most extravagant life possible, but they're absolutely wrong. <laughs> it is a lot of fun and there's a lot of really interesting people and a lot of the ultra riche and chic happening around me, but from a day-to-day -day working standpoint, I'm working 14 to 18 hours a day for 40 days in a row twice a year. It's not easy to live out of a suitcase and to not have all the comforts of home uh, for that many days in a row, especially when you're working that long. And when I say working 14, 18 hour days, I mean actual work, not just sitting around twiddling my thumbs. I go from shooting to editing to dealing with customers, to working emails, text messages, it just never stops. Anytime you have a free moment, um, you just have to keep moving, moving, moving. Uh, how we can see the future of the Fashion Runway Photography in the magazine? What's changed lately? Well, in the last few years, there has been a dramatic um, decrease in the amount of people attending the fashion shows. It's become a lot more exclusive. When the economy collapsed, a lot of the newspapers and magazines uh, had let go of their staff photographers and switched to hiring uh, freelance teams, um, such as the team that I'm heading up. So we pull on my, uh, a bunch of different uh, credentials. I work for daily newspapers in several countries around the world, um, top glossy magazines that are on the newsstand all over the place, as well as television and internet. So. Uh, my daily reach is 25 million viewers a day. All right, and last question. Your advice for younger people who want to jump in this pursuit of the fashion runway photography, beauty photography career? Well, in this day and age, the equipment has gotten so good that almost anybody can push a button. But it's not about pushing a button. It's about creating a photograph or creating a picture. Because when you capture a moment, you have to create that moment instead of just pressing the button. Um, so the competition in the industry has changed quite a bit because there's lots of people running around saying I'll give you my stuff for free but it's the quality level is just not of the same caliber because they don't know what to deliver. The editors and all the people in the industry worldwide are looking for something specific because every company has the same limitations. They don't have a lot of post-production time. They just want to take the pictures and run them. So you have to supply them to them the way that they want them because they're not really going to do too much work to it. Um, the other thing is that when you create pictures, they have to have personality. A little more than just, you know, churning out the same old stuff. You have to uh, find your angle within whatever it is that you're shooting and capture it. And if you can't get it in the first few minutes, try again, try again, try again. And tell us about cameras you use and technical stuff that's involved in this. Well, here in 2012, technology is moving so fast that things are changing pretty much every day. Camera equipment is certainly nowhere close to cheap. And it's hard to stay on top of the curve because every season there seems to be a new camera, a new lens that costs a lot of money. That seems to be the new standard. Um, you kind of have to follow that and chase it to a certain extent, but it's not about the equipment you have. It's about what you do with the equipment. Because you could have the best camera in the world, but if you don't know how to create a picture, then your picture is just going to be as if you took it with a point-and-shoot camera. So it's pointless. Um, when you go to events that are worldwide news, such as like a Chanel fashion show or something like that, um, you really want to capture it in a way that is going to be inspiring to everybody out there because that's the reason why a company like that puts together a show. 
Um, in order to do that, you have to have the technical requirements to be able to do that. It's not just as simple as just picking up your cell phone and snapping a picture of Karl Lagerfeld when he's standing in front of you. You have to find the personality of the moment and capture it. I can see your box from behind this. Maybe you show us what it's get. You know? Well, here's what it takes to create a good picture in fashion. First off, you need a case that is something that can protect your gear. And not only that, but give you a step up over everybody else. And then you need a variety of lenses such as this. This is a 300 millimeter, it costs about $8,000. And that's my main lens that I use 90% of the time. I shoot about 400 shows a season from New York ending in Paris. And I'll shoot about 350 shows on this lens alone, which is my workhorse. And then of course you need a pro camera body that's going to uh, be able to take all the pictures because if I shoot 400 shows I'm looking at probably about maybe 400,000, 300,000, 200,000 photos in the season. So you can't have a cheap camera because then it'll just keep breaking. And not only that, I can't just have one camera because I'm shooting for major publications. I can't have it break down and then what am I going to do? Nothing. So back in my room, I have a couple more of these. On top of that, you need a, another type of zoom lens that's a little bit shorter than the other one, depending on the size, because some rooms are bigger than others. And if you're in a room that's too small for my main lens, then I use a smaller lens, so that way I'm able to shoot it. And of course, because I'm working backstage a lot, I have a portrait lens, which uh, I shoot all of the supermodels with. But you can't just have a regular flash, so I have a studio flash, a portable studio in my box. So when I walk into a fashion show, I'm not just carrying your standard flash. This is a strobe light, equivalent that you'd see in my photo studio back in Canada. But I have it here, and I can just hook it up wherever I want. So I have a light stand. I put my thing together. Hey, hey Isla, how's it going? Hi. I'm doing an interview. Oh, this is Isla one of our editors and then of course to make people look beautiful you need nice lighting accessories and as you can see this is all inside of my box before I opened it up how could you even known that in it I had a complete photo studio excellent nice tour so people have to looking forward to get all these small gadgets costly gadgets to start doing this fashion photography so well fashion photography if you want to do it on the high end will start you at about twenty thirty thousand dollars okay okay thank you very much james no problem